as we sit down, I'd like to have a uh, moment of silence. You saw in the uh, Hartford Current and media and also national media, uh, a Yukon athlete, a, law, a Navy SEAL, uh, lost his life in Somalia. Uh, this individual was a senior chief, special warfare operator Kyle Milliken of Virginia Beach. He was killed during an operation last Friday. Uh, he graduated from the University of Connecticut in 2001 and was an athlete there. And to show what type of individual he was all the way back into college, his coach said, Kyle was a glue kid, the kind of kid that didn't just show up to practice every day, but made those around him better. Let's have a moment of silence for an individual that gave his life for our country and is a Yukon graduate. Thank you very much. Also, a couple other things uh, as we move forward. The uh, infographic, which you saw again uh, today up there, was really d done for our expo, and it was terrific. And again, I want to thank Professor Patricia Raymond and Wei Chen, for, uh, the librarian at Middlesex Community College, uh, that did that along with our members of our Business Education Partnership Advisory Council Career Expo Planning uh, Committee. Uh, that was terrific, and uh, we really appreciate it. Next, I'd like to get Greg Shook up, our chairman. Uh, this is his last breakfast. Uh, annual dinner will be coming up. He just did a, a terrific job this year in leadership. You can see by the tremendous turnout we have here today for uh, President Herbst. Uh, but our events have been great all year. Our membership is still strong. Uh, we're having a terrific year as far as both retention of members and new members. And he's been a great leader. Greg Shook. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. I want to also thank uh, Larry's staff. Uh, every single individual that works at the chamber uh, is, is phenomenal, and, and nothing could get done without, without their help and assistance. I really appreciate them. Uh, the, the second thing I, I get to always do is the state and local officials in attendance. These people have stepped up and have done wonderful things and, and care about the community, so uh, please thank them. You have the blue sheet on your, um, your tables. Um, also, like to thank Liberty Bank and their, their whole team of what, uh, being a sponsor year in and year out. Uh, much appreciated. Um, and I will just say a, a, a welcome to everybody else on the, on the dais. But uh, for, for Susan, I really appreciate uh, everything you've done. And I looked up just three little tiny things, and one that you've been consistently in the, in the uh, top public schools in the country. And it's been under your leadership as the first female. You're the 15th. I'm the 17th bank president. My bank, we both go back to the 1800s, uh, even though you don't look it, I do. So, uh, you, And uh, the, the other fun thing that I read is that Larry, the coach, who's the big competitor, had said, you know, you're the right person to lead UConn forward. I found that, and, and I, I thought that was so appropriate. Uh, and the final thing that I found that I thought, um, she's a savant into the future. She wrote a book in 2010 called Rude Democracy, Civil Civility and Incivility in Politics. And she talked briefly today about bringing us all together and working forward. So you really had an eye on the ball. And I look forward to reading uh, the details of that. Thank you for being here. Uh, I want to welcome the new members. Uh, we have uh, Walt Medina and Associates from East Berlin. We have St. Francis Hospital in Hartford. And not on the list that came in just after the printing of, your, uh, of these documents, uh, Ford Harrison out of Hartford. I also get to uh, congratulate Darlene Briggs from uh, Comfortainment in Incorporated for receiving the John A. Hallberg Award at the 18th Annual John A. Hallberg Awards Dinner held on May 2nd in 2017. Uh, Phil Chicola and Larry Riley 
on being recognized by the City of Middletown Urban Forestry Commission for all their hard work and dedication to the veterans of Middletown and the region. Uh, Durham Agricultural Fair on being named the Connecticut Tourism Volunteer of the Year Award, recipient of the 2017 Governor's Conference on T Tourism and Conference held on May 4th, 2017. Dr. Pat Charles from Middletown Public Schools for her outstanding dedication to the students of the Middletown Public Schools, serving in many capacities for the past 17 years with a total of 35 years working in education. Congratulations on your upcoming retirement. And Middlesex Community College, congratulations on celebrating your 50th anniversary, providing over 50 years of excellence in Middletown community. Thank, thanks to all of you. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Good job. We're going to move around a little bit. Uh, we're going to start up with uh, some of our recognitions, and we'll move through these uh, fairly quickly. Uh, we've had a tremendous business education. It's our business education partnership breakfast every year. Uh, and uh, this is a tremendous group. Uh, we have a uh, host of volunteers. Just one event, I can tell you, uh, about the Career Expo. Uh, 130 businesses with 250 volunteers at Wesleyan University. I know this will be touched on, but that's just part of that volunteer base. Another 100 volunteers dealing with mentors uh, in, our, in our region to help out uh, kids that uh, need some support and somebody to look up for, uh, up to. And uh, it gives me a great honor now to uh, introduce Tom Serra, who's the chair of this uh, uh, committee and has done a fantastic uh, job again this year in his leadership, Tom Serra. The reason we moved around because I said, Coach, look, I have a speech like this. He said to me, did you time it? I said, no, I didn't. So uh, do you have the hook? I'm so pleased to, to be here this morning. In 1989, I was elected by the majority of one be when I became an administrator to be on the Business Education Committee by the coach. And I'm so glad he did that because this is such a fulfilling experience with the Business Education Committee. And as you heard from the coach, to, to see the Career Expo as it, uh, as it happened. But I have to read this, Coach, so don't give me the hook. Okay. Uh, thank the sponsors of the Education Committee. The sponsors, Eversource, Pratt & Whitney, funding commitment, the support of the Business Education Partnership Program. Wesleyan University for using the hockey rink that we had uh, all the presenters, uh, 120 presenters, a couple hundred people that presented, with about almost 1,500 students coming through uh, from Middlesex County. Liberty Bank for supplying the bags. You have the bags there, the red bags. Every single student got a red bag as well to get their little trinkets that uh, all the presenters had. Uh, Presenters' uh, <clears throat> hospitality table was American Eagle Financial Credit Union, Uris Dining Services, Lyman Farms, Triple Springs uh, Water Company, uh, and a uh, special mention to Skills USA, Vinyl Technical High School. Where are you all? Where, the, where are you? There you are. Uh, <clears throat> For the individuals that were there, the, the individuals, uh, the students were in the red coats. There's, they, they go to competition, and, and it just like DECA in, in this Middletown High School. Uh, again, a very special thank you to the business and career professionals. Again, the individual, the presenters, took time out of their busy days to, to be involved in our 12th annual. This is the 12th year that we've had this, so that the students could see what careers are available, uh, so they can achieve the their goals and what they want to do in, the, uh, in, the, in their future, possibly. Again, uh, but more importantly, though, the individuals on the committee, and if, if you look in your blue, you see all the names of the individuals. But in particular, I'd like to, to thank Donna Finkelstein. Is Donna here this, this morning? Could you stand up, please? Donna. Michael Faenza, Michael, where are you? 
Stand up, please. He's here. here. He's out in the hall helping the students, okay? <laughs> Edie. <laughs> and and um, Rosario Rizzo, and Rosario in 1989, was with me on the, on the, on the committee, and as well as, uh, <laughs> as well as Mary Ann Parati was on the committee back then. And this was a dream to have a career expo. It was a dream to have what's on that, uh, that you saw the info commercial by, by professor from uh, Middlesex County. Incredible that these things came to fruition. And Jennifer DeKine is over there standing, did tons of work for us <laughs> to make this. And, this. and this all happens because individual commitment to a group effort, that is what makes a teamwork, a company work, a society work, and it's a, a civilization work. And you all see that when you go downstairs uh, to, to the chamber uh, rooms downstairs. And it says Vince Lombardi. You should add Larry McHugh to that as well. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, now just mention that uh, it gives me great honor. I was at a, uh, an event uh, last Friday. Uh, the governor appointed me. Uh, uh, chair of the advisory committee of uh, Connecticut Valley Hospital. And I went to my first meeting last week. And uh, Dave uh, Larson uh, has served on this board and leadership for 15 years. Uh, and Dave, as you know, is a former superintendent of schools. Uh, he was one of the individuals with Hal Kaplan that started our chamber mentor program. Uh, he was probably the best superintendent uh, of schools during his era uh, throughout the whole state of Connecticut, uh, which was older than I am, Dave, so I have to say that. Uh, but more importantly today, because we have Susan Herbst here, he holds his doctoral degree from the University of Connecticut. So let's recognize Dave Larson for everything he's done. He wanted to talk, but we're on a time frame, so I said, uh, you know, we're, we, got, uh, we had Tom Sarah up here already, so. Uh, also, uh, I just like, and they're good friends, by the way. Uh, I'd just like to introduce the people that aren't speaking at the head table. Uh, hold your applause to the end. Dan Drew, the mayor of uh, Middletown, the mayor of Cromwell, Enza Fienza. Uh, Dr. Toro, president of Central Connecticut State University. Paul Schlickman, uh, athletic director at Central Connecticut State University. Ann Evans, a great leader from uh, the United States Department of Commerce, does so much for our manufacturing sector. We had a meeting uh, last week with 35 manufacturers down in Wheeling, uh, down in uh, Chester. They're putting up a 30,000 square foot addition. And I know we have students here today. Uh, they are going to hire, uh, over this next year, 30 more engineers. And uh, that's why it's so, so important uh, that uh, young people start really targeting different areas. And they will be up to 100 engineers out of that facility, a uh, brand new facility. And it's just amazing to hear our manufacturing sector, uh, which we are loaded with in Middlesex County, the growth that's going on because of the expansion uh, and work of both Electric Boat and Pratt and & Whitney. There are jobs all over the place. And so, you know, I've been rem I'm always a cup half full guy, and I always believe that, and we can prove it now throughout our region with the manufacturing growth going on. It was just uh, terrific. And Ann has done a magnificent job over the past years, really hand-holding a lot of these manufacturers and trying to help them with exporting uh, uh, throughout our world and running many, many trips. And she's been a great supporter of our chamber also. Uh, so it gives me now a great uh, honor to introduce a twosome up here uh, to talk about the Travelers uh, Championship. We have Nathan Groove, who's always with us, but we're honored today to have Andy Bassett. He's here a month early. He will be at the next breakfast in June. But Andy is also, uh, not only does he work with travelers, uh, but he is really the individual, along with Nathan, that have really skyrocketed 
the Travelers Golf Tournament. But more important to me, he's a member of our Board of Trustees of, uh, of the University of Connecticut, and he's done a great job there, along with all of his other leadership uh, situations. So if I could have Nathan and Andy come on up and do a Travelers Update. Um, for beauty. Good morning. <laughs> Don't mind what he's going to do behind my back. Um, 38 days to go. I cannot believe this is the last time we're going to be up here before tournament week, but, uh, but it is. Um, and Andy is, uh, is here um, this morning, and I, I want to say a couple things, because what we're going to do in, in 17, um, it's, it's going to be pretty special this year. Uh, the field that's been announced, all the other activities around tournament week, Chandler, you and your team with the concert series, uh, it's it, it blows my mind sometimes how many people it takes again to put this together, but the corporate support, the, the tickets, the volunteers, everything is pacing so far ahead of where we've been, and you're a part of that. And coming out this year, I was talking to Neil earlier, um, I mean, it's, it's special. This year's going to be very, very unique, but the, the gentleman behind me is the reason why this is happening this way. Andy works relentlessly on this tournament. Um, I don't know how he has a day job because I am with him constantly about the tournament. And it is, he picks it up, he puts it on his back, and it's, it's no secret formula. It is late nights, early mornings, hard, hard work, and he does that. And I know Susan, you and your team see that on the UConn side because what he does for the university, for the health center, for the foundation, um, we are all in this community uh, a beneficiary of that. And I want to say, Susan, that, that I want to say thank you to you as well real quick because what you do from a leadership standpoint as far as um, having UConn support the tournament, um, from the coaches, from the teams that come out to support it, again, I say this, if, the, if you think this is a golf tournament, you're, you're mistaken. This is a commercial for what we do with the resource. And UConn taking advantage of this resource and using it as a commercial to really highlight the fact that when you are a part of this community, when you're part of this tournament, when you're a part of UConn, you're part of a family. And Larry highlighted that. You, you have an alumnus from 2001 that we are honoring this morning because of what he did, because he was I I at UConn. And when you come to UConn, when you come to Connecticut, you are part of a family. And that is something the players talk about when they come here, that they feel it different. Our sponsors feel it. When we bring partners in from out of market, they say it's different here. We get something here that we don't get in any other market across the country. And you help us extend that feeling and that message in that commercial about what UConn is and uh, what Connecticut is. So thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to let Andy talk, um, but thank you. We will see you very, very soon um, at the tournament. And uh, I don't know what he's doing behind me. So, but I got my coat pulled, so sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Nathan. He left me 10 seconds. Larry said 10. <laughs> my, my comments are really quick. Uh, you know, we have a great team doing a lot of hard work. We got back to 1230 this morning from Ponte Vedra recruiting, although we call it building friendships, which is really true, uh, recruiting not only the rest of our player field for this year, but for next year, for 18. And I'm telling you, if you think this year's tournament's going to be great, and it is, wait till you see next year's, um, because we believe in the status quo is unacceptable. We drive hard to make sure it improves every year and every day. And uh, you know, I don't have to say more than Rory McIlroy, pretty good, huh? Uh, Jason Day, pretty good. This is where Nathan, if you ever saw uh, Happy Gilmore and uh, Lee Trevino is always standing there looking at him going like this. That's Nathan to me. Nathan's always giving me the scowl with a shaking head sideways saying, Andy, you can't say anything more, so I won't. But there's some other great ten, top ten players who are going to be with us in the field this year who haven't announced yet. And, and if you th this will be the, I think this is going to be one of the best fields we've ever had since the founding of this tournament. And the depth of it is going to be incredible. Uh, what, what's going to happen on Women's Day? We'll get the, the guest speaker for Women's Day. Well, I know it's not announced yet, right? I can't do it. But, but you can announce it. Nobody but, say anything. No, yeah, if you promise not to say anything, I mean, you know, if you, but if we, our celebrity chef is going to be phenomenal. And if uh, in, in uh, oh, uh, uh, our, our speaker, our guest speaker is a woman who leads a huge uh, company, very successful. Uh, Handbag, shoe, clothing. Anyway, so I won't say it anymore. But um, <laughs> she's she's going to be great. And and Women's Day is not a, a, just a fun day. It's a Women's Business Networking Day. The amount of amount of business networking that occurs in that room is incredible. In the concert series, you know, if you think of the the the, the group that got rained out last Saturday, last year on Saturday, well, you that might they might be in the mix. I haven't announced anything. Is that pretty good? Okay, that's it. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you in 38 days, and uh, it's going to be a great year. Thanks for your support. Thanks. 
And uh, on uh, Tuesday, June 20th, uh, we'll have Russell Knox speaking here to our monthly chamber breakfast meeting uh, in last year's winter. And Andy uh, has told me that he's a great speaker. And uh, so we're really looking forward uh, to that. Um, also, uh, as I mentioned before, besides our partnerships, we run a mentor program uh, for the city of Middletown, and we have some mentors up in Cromwell also. And uh, this program is very important because we really uh, take some uh, students that need somebody to look up to. And this is a program that I mentioned before that really started uh, with Dave uh, Larson and Hal uh, Kaplan uh, back many years ago when they came to me and they said, can the chamber do something to help uh, these kids out in the community? Our chamber is unique, as you know. Uh, we not only do the mentoring and the business partnerships, we're heavily involved in substance abuse issues besides running uh, many, many of the other things we do throughout the county because we want the county to be strong for all of its citizens. But our mentor program uh, has been led over the past couple of years by uh, Cheryl Kraft uh, from Connecticut Valley Hospital. And she has done an unbelievable job uh, working with Jennifer and all of the volunteers uh, in, in, in our uh, region uh, to make sure these kids have somebody to look up to. So it gives me a great honor to introduce Cheryl Kraft. Thank you, Larry. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, at this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our wonderful sponsors. Uh, without their help, we certainly wouldn't be in the position that we're in. And that includes the Liberty Bank Foundation, Middle Oak, Middletown Board of Education, Seasons Federal Credit Union, and Connecticut Valley Hospital. I also want to thank uh, Sylvia Webb, Jennifer DeKine, because certainly without their support, um, you know, we're, we're successful because of all the hard work that goes into this. And at this time, I would also like to ask all the mentors to stand and be recognized, please. Thank you. Before uh, turning this over to, uh, to Chandler for our introduction, I'd just like to recognize some of our Board of Trustees members that are here uh, to uh, listen to Susan today, and we've got a good group of them. Uh, Adam Krugler, uh, our student trustee. This is a great example of a young guy uh, that has been a, done a fantastic job. Anybody around here that's interested in hiring somebody that uh, is graduating from UConn this year, there is a good opportunity right there. Uh, also, we have with us Rick, uh, Rick Carberry, uh, Tom Kruger, uh, Andrea Dennis Levine, and we have Andy Bissett uh, with us today. So, I just let's have a round of applause for all those Board of Trustees members. <laughs> Susan, I uh, publicly want to thank you too for your unbelievable leadership, uh, the partnership uh, that we've had since we hired you. Uh, a few years ago, time goes by really fast, uh, has really been a, a, an unbelievable change uh, in the University of Connecticut. Uh, just go up there and look at what UConn looks like today uh, compared to what it was, uh, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, look at the buildings, look at the grounds, look at the enthusiasm of the students, uh, look at the articles coming out about us being a top 20 university, but more importantly, uh, our graduates going out into the business community and other sectors and doing a great job. Uh, that be and, and in higher ed today, uh, it is very, very tough uh, to be a leader because you are under the microscope every day with every decision. And what bothers me, uh, more than anything else, is that there are too many naysayers out in the public and not enough yaysayers. People that get up and say, hey, uh, it's important that we educate our students in a great institution, whether it be Middlesex, Central, or Yukon, and we give these people the tools they need to give us a future workforce and, more importantly, a better quality of life for all of the citizens in the state of Connecticut. That is vital. And our chamber has been in the forefront of this. 
I get emotional on this because higher education is a key to the door for every one of these students sitting out here. And we should never be ashamed of what we're doing. And we will never be ashamed because UConn and Central and Middlesex, wherever it is in higher ed, it's vital, vital for the state of Connecticut to continue to go forward. And I, I get emotional on that because I believe it. And I've been involved in higher ed since 1983. And thank God we have institutions and leaders like Susan Herbst that's willing to stand up and take the heat to make sure that the university goes forward to be a great institution. And the Board of Trustees are right with me, shoulder to shoulder, which is also very important in these tough times. And that is the most important thing. That's why I'm so proud of every one of them. Liberty Bank is unbelievable. <laughs> they are, uh, through their foundation, through their employees, people like uh, Marianne Parati and Chip Painter that are two that are really active with our chamber. Uh, and of course, Chandler, who's on our executive committee, past chairman of the chamber, past Distinguished Citizen Award of the chamber, and an unbelievable leader here in the state of Connecticut. We are so fortunate to have Chandler Howard as a leader. This individual is a true role model for what is good in the business community. He not only wants his bank to be the best bank, not in Connecticut, but indeed the country, he wants this bank to be a leader in volunteerism and to make where his branches of the bank operate to have great quality of life through the foundation and Sue and everything that they do. Chandler, I cannot say enough nice things about you. The most important thing to me, some of the staff is laughing at that. I, I, <laughs> Do they know something I don't know? <laughs> but uh, Chandler, uh, the most important thing I can say uh, is that you're a dear friend, a great leader, and we're all privileged to know you. Chandler Howard. Oh, thank you, Coach. And it's another great day here at the Middlesex Chamber of Commerce. And, uh, after hearing that uh, fire, fiery uh, 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 conversation, I think it's appropriate for me to start with something a little bit funny. Try this one on. I heard it a little bit earlier today. And I think it's appropriate for uh, an education uh, forum. So there was an archaeologist in New York uh, that dug down 10 feet, found traces of copper wire, and he concluded that New Yorkers had the first telephone system over 100 years ago. Upon hearing this, an archaeologist out in California dug down 20 feet and found solid copper wire, and he concluded that Californians had a vast telecommunication system some 200 years ago. Well, upon hearing this, Bubba from Texas was out on his farm. He dug down 30 feet, found absolutely nothing, and he concluded that Texans had the first wireless communication system ever. <laughs> so I thought that one might be uh, appropriate for this morning. But this is really, um, you know, the chamber does an awful lot, and these breakfasts are just so interesting uh, from a lot of uh, uh, the different programs that, that are here and uh, the different speakers that we have. Uh, but to me, this education, uh, program is the most important one that we do uh, every year because it really does celebrate the very critical and important tie between business uh, and the uh, business and education. And at Liberty, we take that very, uh, that very seriously. Um, the programs we support range from early literacy initiatives for very young children to mentoring and tutoring for elementary school students to career uh, and college uh, exploration uh, and youth employment, 
uh, for those in the middle and high schools, uh, and it doesn't stop there. We also uh, offer scholarships for seniors going on to uh, higher education, and then beyond that, we support programs that focus on uh, parent leadership, uh, adult education, and employment training. So uh, it's pretty important to us from a business standpoint. I also want to uh, mention that our foundation is celebrating 20 years this year. It's our 20th anniversary. Uh, and during that time, uh, the Liberty Bank Foundation has provided over $10 million uh, in grants and donations to uh, very worthy organizations within our footprint, including $4 million right here uh, in uh, Middlesex County uh, to support educational uh, organizations. Um, one of the ones that we've supported has been the Hal Kaplan Middletown Mentor Program. Uh, that program has received funding from the uh, bank for over 20 years, in fact, every year since it's been uh, in existence. And uh, you heard uh, the name uh, Michelle Mazada earlier. Uh, she's been on the Mentor Core Committee since its inception. And we have more than 60 Liberty employees who've served on the Middletown uh, Mentor Program. And I want to take a second just to acknowledge my uh, Liberty colleagues that are here uh, uh, this morning. If you all stand up and be acknowledged. And one final point before I introduce our speaker this morning. You know, one of Liberty's core values is giving back through volunteerism. Last year alone, our employees dedicated over 14,000 hours to support local organizations uh, helping to build strong communities. So um, as a banker for over 30 years, some might say even almost 40 years, um, I think I know a little bit about uh, investing, and one of the things that I've learned over the years is that investing is at, in education is one of the most rewarding moves any business can make, uh, and we're committed to continue to do so. So you can see why I said that this in, uh, uh, supporting this event this morning uh, is an ideal fit for us at Liberty and so important. Now, we're honored to be here again this year and it's my pleasure to introduce Susan Herbst, a woman who's passionate about supporting today's leaders and building tomorrow's leaders. Susan devotes her personal and professional career to education. She arrived on the University of Connecticut's campus uh, in June of 2011. No, that's not right. Yeah, it is right. Wow. As its 15th president. Seems like you've been there for 20 years. <laughs> Uh, is its uh, 15th president, and as Greg mentioned, its fir uh, first female to be in the role. Since then, she's led the implementation of two major state investments in UK, Next Generation Connecticut and Bioscience Connecticut to uh, expand classes in the science, technology, humanities, medical, level of philanthropic giving to UConn through the UConn Foundation, and we truly are so fortunate to have such a distinguished scholar and an accomplished leader heading up our flagship University of Connecticut. Please join me in giving a warm Middlesex County welcome to President Susan Herbst. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks to Larry, our fearless leader, uh, not only of um, Middlesex, but of the Yukon Board of Trustees. He's very emotional, but so am I. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or not, the two of us at the helm, but uh, we're fighters, and we like to fight the naysayers and, and the haters, um, as young people would say, and uh, tell the story of the university, which is an amazing story, not just since I arrived here, but long before that a university on the rise. So thanks to our trustees who are here, who are named. We have a couple of officers of the university who are here. Uh, Andy Agonobi, he's our executive vice president for the Health Center, that large operation that you see in Farmington that, that you should go to. Uh, for
for all your medical care, wonderful uh, docs and nurses there. Our general counsel is here, Richard Orr, and, and I think that's it. But the university is run by a team of people. So I get to take a lot of the credit for the great stuff that goes on, but um, we're really a, a team of leaders and we, we do everything together to, um, to lead the place successfully. Um, welcome soon to some of our new UConn students. I met uh, six women, um, I think from Mercy High School. Uh, looking forward to you coming on campus and, and getting oriented this summer as you gear up to start your academic career at the university. So thanks so much to everybody in this room for your support of higher education. I know so many of you for six years now, and uh, this has been more of a conversation you know, between us about the future of the university, and it's one of the warmest, best places in the state of Connecticut coming to Middlesex, and I know that's because of all of you, um, the businesses that you run, the not-for-profits that you have, and your commitment to this community, as well as, of course, your great leader, Larry McHugh. Uh, so, so let's continue the conversation. I want to give you an update on what's going on at the university, and happy to take questions, so I'll be pretty brief. On student success, this is what we do. This is the most important thing to us. We just celebrated our 138th commencement this past weekend. Um, it was gloomy on Friday and then Saturday when all the ceremonies started, and we have many of them for all the, the different colleges and schools, uh, the sun came out. Um, but even if it had stayed gloomy, um, it's an effervescent kind of weekend because our students, our families are so incredibly excited about their achievement. We had the largest number of graduates ever in the history of the university uh, graduate um, this commencement, 9,000. So that's our, our, our biggest uh, graduating class ever. They go on to great things. Um, in terms of the undergraduates, they go on to careers and they're going to business school, they're going to law school, medical school, graduate school. Um, they're going off to consulting firms, they're going off to be teachers. We have a lot of students still who want to go to the Peace Corps, Teach for America, um, go into the arts, go to New York. Uh, a lot of people want to go to New York. Uh, for some reason, the gravitational pull of UConn is toward, toward New York. Um, for young people, so that's where they hope to be. But a lot of students going to Boston, to LA, to Silicon Valley, to Chicago. So it's, it's wonderful to talk to our students at commencement and hear about their big plans. The great thing about working with young people, as I have my whole career, is that at this age, especially 18 to 22, 24, you know, it takes a little longer to go through college now, um, they are, they're full of life, um, they have the life force, they think they can change the world, and they can. Uh, and so we, we get to see that over and over again with each incoming class. And so you, the university keeps you young. That's why there's a lot of old professors, because why leave um, when you can be at a place that is constantly regenerating and, and constantly young? Um, our applications, and this is this, this figure, the number of applications that you get to a university is the most telling of all the data that you look at um, in terms of university success. So we are, again, at a record number of applications for our freshman class. So about 37,000 applications uh, for the freshman class. We only have 3,600 seats on the Storrs campus. So students who were admitted to UConn this year, uh, congratulations, very competitive process. I know we have a lot of alums out here. You all would have gotten in because I can, I can feel your, your high intelligence from here. Um, but I will say to, to students who aren't uh, applying yet to college, but who will be soon, you know, keep your grades up, because it's become very tough to get in. Um, and the reason that uh, we have so many applications to the university is we are this amazing value for being a top 20 public research university, so we're a great value. And the word is out that our faculty care tremendously about teaching, that we want our students to have a good time, but also you know, get some balance in their education, have a good time, but also um, figure out what their passion is and how to pursue that, how to eventually share it with the world. So um, that word gets out. You know, Students come to UConn, they have a great experience. They tell that to uh, younger students in their high schools. The guidance counselors spread the word. And uh, so we're getting just, just clobbered with applications, and that's a very good thing. You should be incredibly proud that we're a top 20 public university, that's your university, uh, that you as taxpayers um, made happen, made, made possible. Um, but you should be very proud too about our pricing. And uh, you know, you hear a lot on the news about the skyrocketing price of higher education and how that is out of control. That's not true at the University of Connecticut. 
And so we are grouped together with a lot of schools that I have to say do have at a control tuition and are super high. Um, we're not, we're very competitive with our peers. There are places like Penn State, Maryland, Rutgers. Um, so we're, we're right where we should be for a major research university that has to attract the very best faculty in the world. So we're there, we're affordable, and I will tell you that our, our tuition, our in-state tuitions, so this is uh, tuition and fees and room and board, all in is about $26,000 a year. But that's the sticker price and over 50% of our students do not pay anything close to that. So it's very important to us to give out a lot of financial aid to make loans possible. Uh, they have state loans, federal loans, uh, but the university also thinks financial aid is one of our most important expenditures. So um, when looking at the price, the actual cost of attendance of a university, you have to look at students' individual packages and not the sticker price. All that said, we have a lot of students that can pay that sticker price, and that do. And so our, um, our finances are in, in pretty good shape because of this balance, um, but we also don't lose a lot of students because of our, our great value. So UConn is still very affordable. Most important to us is helping students who struggle or who are even indigent. Um, indigent students have a little bit more opportunity in that they have Pell Grants and a lot of help from the federal government, but working class students, students who find themselves in one financial position when they apply to UConn and then a parent loses a job or something happens in their family and they find themselves short of money, we come to the aid of those students. We help those students to complete. And I don't think you could find a student who started at the university who we didn't help complete their education. Um, also, last statistic while I'm bragging about our pricing is uh, we have a, a very low average debt level that students leave the university with. So that's a statistic that university presidents pay super close attention to. Um, the debt that students leave UConn with is well below the national average for research universities, very important. And when that number starts to creep up, then you know that you are, you're overpriced. So be proud, we're affordable, we're a great value um, for this incredible quality. So let me talk about that quality a little bit. The, uh, the brain power of our students is unmistakable. Um, and it is felt in every classroom, every discipline across the university. Our students are very high achievers, hence uh, it's difficult to get into the university. Um, the SAT scores keep going up. The kind of students that we attract are, are just amazing. But a lot of the brain power of the university is the faculty. The faculty are the stability of any university, and they are the ones who will make it great by educating our students and also by doing research and public service. Um, our faculty is world class. We have, of course, junior faculty who are right out of graduate programs or uh, postdoctoral programs. But then we also steal a lot of senior faculty from other great universities, um, which is a really quick way to accelerate your success in, in lots of disciplines. So, you know, just to bring on this a little longer, is we have recruited stolen tenured faculty, full professors from, here I'll go from south to north. Um, University of Miami, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, University of Virginia, Johns Hopkins, University of Maryland, uh, Duke, I went back down south, um, Penn State, uh, Dartmouth, you know, all the great universities. We steal faculty from those places. And the faculty at a research university teach, of course. That is our central mission. Um, but we are also tasked with, and it's in our charter, being the flagship research university for the state of Connecticut. Um, it's a grave responsibility. We are the university that is supposed to work on solving the world's greatest problems, and they are energy, sustainability, the protection of human rights and social justice, the cure for disease. These are the things that university research faculty work on through their projects, through their grants, support from the federal government. So we like to solve problems in our local area, in our state, but like any great research university, public and private, we try to solve the biggest problems in the world. Um, and I, I really do want to emphasize over in our health center on the Farmington campus, we are working on cures for disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancer. That's what a research university does. That's why we just steal all those fancy uh, faculty from, from great places. 
We are a course, and we've talked about this before over the years, critical to the economic development of the state of Connecticut. Uh, how do we do this? Well, we employ a lot of people, um, but it's, it's far more than that. Our faculty start businesses um, they, through their invention, uh, scientific invention, engineering, uh, material sciences, all the different fields that we're strong at. Uh, faculty start companies. Those companies employ people. Uh, faculty bring in federal research grants. Um, and through those grants, they can hire people. And all those people who come to Connecticut, um, they help us fight the brain drain. We're a university. We, we're a magnet for brain power for people from around the world and around the country. So um, it's, it's really vitally important that we invest in the university in a way that enables our faculty to invent, to bring people to Connecticut, and again, solve the big problems that, that we all worry about day to day as we read the newspaper or watch the news. Um, we hear a lot about STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, about the, the health center. Um, that's very big, expensive, sexy stuff. Um, but the heart of a university, any great university, is the liberal arts. And uh, we still pride ourselves on our general education curriculum, the fact that students are forced to take the humanities and the social sciences. And it's, it's really the humanities um, and the social sciences that enable our students to ask questions, why do I do what I do? Um, if you are an engineer, say you're interested in material sciences or, or computer engineering, um, why do you do that? Um, you know, what is life all about? What do we really value um, with regard to this country, to humanity? Um, so, so the humanities and social sciences help you to ask those questions about what does it all mean? And we still do that at the university. It is often the only place that people, Americans, get to ask those questions. Because once you go off in the world and you, you know, buy houses and have jobs and have children, you, know, you forget to think about the big questions. So if it's not done and you don't have that foundation in college, um, you may never have it. So we take that very, very seriously. Our humanities are very strong at the university. I always like to talk about our world-class philosophy department. Um, philosophy is one of the most relevant disciplines in the world today because, again, it helps you ask why you do what you do, why does life have any meaning at all. Um, I did, I did want to say a few words about the state budget because, you know, it's hard, it's hard not to, uh, to think about that when you're a public research university with so much to protect. You know, I had over my house last night a big party for um, graduates of the NEAG School of Education who helped the university. And these are people out teaching in the state of Connecticut who um, <clears throat> make us proud every day. Um, and they're very worried. NEAG is one of the top schools of education in the country, and they worry about what the state budget is going to do to the university. Um, the state budget is uh, in the deficit that we have. Uh, and we have to be part of solving that deficit, um, is of grave concern because endangers our excellence. Um, if, the, if the budgetary situation gets too grim, it means we can't bring all that brain power to Connecticut. We can't hire those fabulous faculty. We can't give them the equipment, the buildings that they need to do 21st century science. We can't support our students well. We can't give out as much, as, as much financial aid as we do give out to put together an incredibly diverse, high-achieving freshman class every year. So we worry on the budget. We are incredibly efficient. We have a terrific finance department, chief financial officer. Uh, we are constantly trying to look for savings, but you can only save so much. And you cannot cut your way to excellence. I will tell you that a lot of the universities that we compete with around the country, their states have recovered. I mean, even California, which looked so worrisome, you know, five, six years ago, um, is doing really well. They're putting money back into higher education that they cut before. Florida, another case like that. We are a top 20 research university. We will slip if we start cutting the university um, too dramatically. So uh, very important for us to try to protect the excellence that we have, because once we lose our standing, once we start to lose our faculty, um, once, th once they go elsewhere to these states that are recovering, we will never get that ranking back. It will take a very long time once you start to slip. Uh, people don't, don't move up. It's hard to move up. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to move down. 
Um, and the rankings are not a beauty contest. They are indicators of real excellence, the kind of students you attract, how much you support your faculty, how dedicated your alumni are to the institution. So the US News and World Report, not a perfect measure of university excellence, but a pretty damn good one. And so uh, we, have to, we have to protect that, which means protecting what we do well at the university. So much of our future is about philanthropy. Um, as, uh, as Chandler said, I spend a lot of time on the road working with our donors, working with corporations, trying to get them to help the university and see their future in the university as well. Um, we know that the state uh, has, has a lot of work to do in filling these deficits that we can't expect appropriations to rise over time. We'll be lucky to keep what we have. Um, so we have to make alternative plans. We have to make sure that we build our endowment, uh, protect our excellence, even if the state doesn't recover as quickly as we'd like to. Um, so, so I hate to end on a down note like that, um, because things are really terrific at the university. We will um, budget and plan to the numbers that we're given um, at the end of the legislat legislative session. Um, again, our, our goal as a research university is to solve those big problems that face mankind. Um, that is number one, along with teaching our terrific students and keeping our students in state. Because again, if the flagship university slips and you don't have an excellent place to send your children to college, um, that's, that's a pretty worrisome thing for any state. Uh, and, and we don't want to be there. We want to be a place where you can send your children, where they get a great education, and they stay in Connecticut. Because when students come to UConn, they stay here to build their lives. We have great evidence for that. Um, so I think that was a positive note. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks so much again for your support of higher education um, and my colleagues too. We have the president of Central here doing a wonderful job. Um, we work together to try to educate this, this workforce and send our students on to, to, to great things. So happy to take some questions. Um, Larry, do we have time for that? Yeah. Thank you. There have got to be a few. I'm happy to. I haven't thought about athletics for about two hours. Um, so I'm, like, I'm overdue in case you have anything on that. I've silenced them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just I, I also want to recognize uh, Bill Pizzuto, director of our Waterbury uh, branch at UConn. Uh, also, just a, um, a mention on uh, June 7th, our annual awards dinner, uh, which we uh, recognize our great uh, outgoing uh, chair here, Greg Shook, and we have one of our distinguished citizens with us here today. It'll be recognized as uh, Ken McCormick, who was a great board member and still is, and a uh, great manufacturer, and he'll be recognized with one of our distinguished citizen award winners. Uh, again, our next breakfast is uh, Tuesday, June 20th. Uh, it's the Traveler's Breakfast. If you haven't, uh, tickets are out. Get your tickets for the golf tournament. Uh, it's going to be a great week here. Strong support of uh, the, our business community for the Travelers. We appreciate everything with uh, Nathan and Andy and their team has done. Brings a lot of people to uh, Middlesex County, especially Cromwell. I want to publicly thank uh, all of the elected people and the police department and all the other departments in Cromwell for all they do for the Travelers Golf Tournament. This is a tremendous amount of work and, and dedication to make this, sure this thing goes off and uh, they deserve a lot of plaudits for everything they do. So again, uh, thank you for being here today. Thanks to our mentors, our business education people. Uh, thanks to all of you. Just remember, the sun always shines in Middlesex County. And uh, we'll say, go Huskies. Thanks. Thank you.